Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a wish wig haul. Take my hand and hold it tight. Look Welcome to my channel. I'm Vanessa. I talk about creative photography and one of the things that I use a lot in my work is wigs. I have a lot of wigs. I buy tons of wigs, not just from Wish, but I also buy them from thrift stores whenever I come across one or I get them given to me as gifts. If people have a wig or they come across a wig that is affordable, they'll pick it up for me. And the reason why I have so many wigs is because when I first started with self-portrait photography, I felt really kind of like insecure about always using myself. I felt like it looked kind of vain and people would judge me for being a self-portrait photographer. So I really tried to disguise myself. One of the ways that you can easily change up your look is to throw on a wig. And so I kind of started this obsession with wigs because then I could kind of change my look or hide myself a little bit better in my photos. I'm over that now, but I still love using wigs because it still does add variety when you're a self-portrait photographer, you're working with the same model and you know, as many creative ideas as you could possibly get. It doesn't change the fact that you are the same person and that alone is consistent through all of the work. So I like wigs because it changes up the variety really well, but another perk to using wigs, especially because I live in Canada and it is cold here in the winter and I do like to work outside and you know, people might complain that wigs are a little bit hot, but I actually really love that it does help keep me warm if I am out taking photos in the colder months, which is like really eight months out of the year. So I really like that and I will kind of plan around the fact that I will want to wear a wig to kind of help keep me warm. I do tend to buy more fantasy colors, so I might not walk around with it just for like reels, but in general, for my purposes, these are more than better than what I need. I have three wigs to share with you guys today. I have this long black wig. I have a long purple wig. And I haven't done anything with these yet. This is just exactly how they came because I wanted to share with you what I do with the wigs once I get them because I don't use them as is. And I have this kind of like a periwinkle blue wig. So the first thing that I look for is that I am looking for a lace front wig. It's pretty easy to tell that you're getting a lace front wig on Wish just because of the price. Um, that usually reflects what you're going to get. These wigs are usually in around the $30 to $40, sometimes as low as $27. You can find a lace front on Wish. If you're getting something for approximately like the $7 to $12 range, it's not going to be lace front. Even though sometimes it will say lace front in the description, it won't. And you'll end up with something like this, which is a hard front. And I mean, they're okay, but it's not nearly as nice and natural looking as the lace front. Because I use these for photography, it's not the end of the world because I am using Photoshop to touch things up a little bit. And you can get away with a cheaper seven to $10 type wig. But I just find overall, I really enjoy the lace front more and I would rather spend a little bit more to have a wig that I really like and will cause less work for me in Photoshop. I'm really hard on my wigs. I'm like climbing around in trees, I'm laying in the dirt, I'm getting in the water, lying in the lake. I am doing all kinds of things to these wigs and so I really am uncomfortable with the thought of spending hundreds of dollars on really good high quality wigs when I'm going to be treating them like trash. They hold up really well. You can wash them with shampoo and condition them and then just air dry them. And so I think that this price point with the ability to clean them up 
without any issues is really ideal for me. And then I don't really worry about what I'm doing with the photos. I can just like let loose and flow with my creativity and not be concerned that I'm gonna ruin my wig because I really only spend 30 bucks on it anyways and it's not the end of the world. So that's really ideal if you're using your wigs for photography. They do come with wig caps, but most of the time I don't even bother. I just put my hair in braids like this and tuck it into the cap because I'm not walking around and I tend to not have a lot of baby hairs. I don't really need a lot of help kind of trying to keep this intact. If something does slip out, I can fix it in Photoshop. I only sometimes glue the wig down and I use this got to be glued spiking glue. It's water resistant, which is good if I'm doing anything with water. And I just put a little bit along the hairline where the lace is and glue that down. The only reason why I would do this is if I am planning on like laying down or hanging in some way where this hair here is not covering but like pulling back where you would see this area. And so that's the only time that I would use this to glue it down and secure it so it looks natural when the hair comes back. Otherwise, I don't even bother because I'm not wearing these for hours. I'm just taking a few photos and sometimes my photo shoots, they'll only last like 20 minutes, depending on what I'm doing, but 20 minutes to a couple hours, I'm not gonna go through the whole hassle of gluing it down and everything if I'm just taking it off and then I'm gonna have all that stickiness to deal with. So let's get to these wigs. These wigs are all lace fronts and they will have a significant portion of lace and so you will have to trim that yourself. And it's really easy, you just follow along the line. Leave a little bit there so that you have something to grip to or something that you can glue down. I like to leave a little bit more around the ears so that I can pull it forward and have a good strong hold with the glue when I am doing that. I don't worry too much about it looking like there's lace there because that's a lot easier to Photoshop than it like flopping or having other hair like falling out. So you can see here, this is where I would want to glue it down because I don't want any lift there and just pull my ear up. Let's try and um, get an idea of the placement that I'm going to want. I'm really liking this wig like the part looks really good and the hair looks really good I mean it's a little solid some people like to pluck it out a little bit and get more of a baby hair look but it doesn't bother me so I usually just leave it I know it looks really like tangly and stuff that's fine you can just brush it out I also have a steamer so for this one because it's supposed to be a straight wig I am going to be lightly steaming it and I will show you guys that but I'm gonna be trimming all the lace and stuff first now, I don't recommend doing this in your cell phone screen, but you know, just for the sake of this video, we're going to give it a try. I'm going to try to leave a little bit of extra in case I need to touch it up, but I think it's going all right. One of the things that I used to be really insecure about is I have a big forehead. Like, you can tell here through the part, like my hair is here and my forehead starts here. And I used to be really insecure about that, but... um. It's actually a little bit of a blessing because when you are working with wigs, it's a lot easier to wear them and have it look natural because I can pull it down over my hair significantly, significantly, and it still looks okay. And then my real hair is very well tucked and hidden in behind. So if you have a large forehead that you've always felt like really insecure about, um, don't. <laughs> it's, it's actually makes wearing wigs so much easier than if you have a very short forehead with lots of full baby hairs and stuff. Um, I feel sorry for you guys. Okay, so that's probably going to need some touching up, but essentially that's what we're doing, um, is cutting off lace and 
So this area, I did leave quite a bit here. It's almost like a finger's width. That's all right. I am going to touch this up. And in Photoshop, this is just the kind of thing that you can um, blend out really easily with like a clone stamp tool or something. So I'm happy with this one and I'm going to move on to the other ones and get those ones trimmed up as well. Oh, half enough to carry on. Not half enough faith to carry on for decades. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop each of these on, give them a brush, and start to figure out where I'm going to want to steam each of these. I'm pretty sure this whole one's getting steamed to be nice and straight, but something like this one that's got some curls to it like I'm gonna want to keep some of the curls but there might be some lumps and bumps that I need to steam out so that's what I'm checking for now on each of these once I have them on and brush them out I have an idea of how it's going to sit and if there's any weird kind of lumpy pieces that I'm gonna have to work on I actually really love this one I have a few purple wigs I just think it looks good with my skin tone or something I don't know I think I can rock them so I tend to gravitate towards purple every time I put one on I think that I need to dye my hair purple but at the same time I don't because I want people to take me seriously in real life and I'm like I don't know that's kind of always just been a fear of mine that people don't take me seriously Right. I love, 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 love this wig. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. I do have some lumpiness here. This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly the kind of thing that I'm going to steam out. Overall, I think it has a really nice, natural, straight look. Like, it's not super straight. I could make it super straight if I want to. But I think for the most part, I'm just going to steam out, I don't mind the bottoms. I think I'm just going to steam out this area that's problematic. It's smooth, it doesn't shed too much, and it's not too shiny. Sometimes the wigs look a little fake because they're too shiny. I think I'm all out, but a little bit of dry shampoo in your wigs will fix that. I had one wig that was just absolutely awful, and it was so shiny and the color was terrible. What I ended up doing is dry shampoo wasn't even enough. I baby powdered the bleep out of that wig. So it had a like more mute look to it and a nicer color and it worked. So if you have to baby powder or dry shampoo your wigs a little bit, that's totally fine. It's a really great way to get it a little bit more natural looking. This particular wig though, I don't think it needs it. I think it looks okay as is and I, love this. I just want to wear it today and have this hair. This is the next wig. It said that it was baby blue, but I really consider this more of like a periwinkle color. It's, yeah, it's kind of like an in-between. It's supposed to be wavy. I think it looks a little bit like a mess. It's okay, like maybe if I was going to use it for a mermaid thing or something, it might look good for that. Um, I'm not sure. I might actually want to steam out all of these. So let's brush it and see if it looks too fluffy or what, and then decide what I want to do with it. I'd love to be the one who'd always say that I love you back. I don't love this one. Um, I need to cut that a little bit shorter, so don't mind that. That's okay, though. It got really fluffy when I brushed out the bottom. It's very full. I guess it could be okay. I'm going to steam it out a little bit, I think, but I am going to try to keep a little bit of the waves and movement because I don't want it to be totally straight. I'm not sure. This might be one that needs some of the dry shampoo in the roots because this seems very flat to me and then it kind of poofs up. So if I put a little bit of dry shampoo up here, I think it might give it a little bit more volume. And then if I steam the bottom a little bit, it might kind of even out the 
um, volume of, of the overall wig. I don't think it's actually that bad. I think that I just don't love the color quite as much as the other purple color. Let's try the black one. This is the one that I've been wanting to shoot with the most because it's Halloween and I just really liked the dark kind of like raven hair look, especially if I'm doing anything kind of witchy. I love this wig. I like how it kind of sits and flows. I haven't brushed it yet, but I already feel like I've got some options with the way that it's going to be placed. Kind of like this over the side thing that it's got going here. I think the curls are really nice. They might need a little bit of work, but um, let's brush it out. It's kind of a mess right now. Now because this one is curls, I'm not gonna go on full on brush like I did with the wavy one and the straight one because I kind of want it to keep its shape a little bit, but I do kind of want to brush in some of the like flyaways and try to get them into the curl that they're supposed to be in. So I'm just kind of lightly brushing the outside and not getting really in there. I also feel like the finger combing and just kind of running my fingers through is better for this wig. You like to run free, but I I'll change my routine if you hold my hand. Cause I'm a shade of blue. Go I love this one. I think I'm going to steam out this one particular lump. I'm not crazy about that, but the rest of it I'm going to try and leave. Finger combing it was a lot better than brushing it. I Feel like it did need a little bit of light brushing but I want to keep the curls in their original kind of chunks so the finger combing was a lot better. The ends are probably the worst part of this wig and they are very tangly and kind of ratty so I'm going to trim this a little bit. In all honesty I think what this wig needs the most is to be shampooed and conditioned and brushed through while it's wet and then hung up to air dry and when it air dries it will start to go back into its curl shape but it's very tangly and it's hard to get the tangles out like this so I think if I condition it and brush it out and let it go naturally into its curled shape it might work a little bit better to have it into smoother curls again so this one needs a little bit of work. I probably won't be doing that on camera because I wasn't prepared to have to do that with these wigs. Maybe I'll save that for another video. It's usable as is. Like I'm not, I could go out and shoot with it today right now like this. I'm fine with that. But I love the color and I love the shape and I love the curls. So I think this wig is really beautiful and I am excited to use this one. This is probably going to be the first one that I do end up creating with. I've been kind of waiting to use it, so. I never buy a wig off of Wish unless it has a customer photo that I can look at that specifically shows the hairline. That's the most important piece to me. If it's got a nice lace front hairline or bangs or something that looks good, that's what I wanna see. I never ever trust the original photos that they put on the ad. I only will buy something that has customer photos. That said, I always make sure to upload a review and a photo of the wig to help other people out because it makes such a huge difference for me when purchasing wigs that I want to help anybody else that's trying to purchase wigs and I definitely always do that. So I encourage you, if you buy a wig from Wish, to take a photo, whether you loved it or hate it, just to show anybody else what to look for and please show this part. Some people will put up a review and they will have a photo with a wig, but they'll be wearing a hat or like a beanie or something or a headband and you can't see that part so you don't really know. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the most important part. So if you're posting a photo, please post a photo. And if you do, make sure that you're showing the hairline nice and clear. Everything else, lumps, bumps, shedding, that stuff can be fixed but you can't turn 
one of these hairlines into one of these. It's just not doable. So I appreciate it. That's what I do for other people and that's what I always look for when I'm shopping. I wanna share with you guys a quick comparison with another wig. This is a Webster wig and I bought it a couple years ago but I believe it was around $120. This was also a lace front wig. It is purple. It's actually a mixture if you look really close. There's purple and gray in there. It's a mixture of color. It's got beautiful curls that have lasted um, and not gone totally to crap. It's a little bit messy right now just because I dug it out of storage. But I just want to show you this because I bought this more expensive wig. It's not like the most expensive wig out there, but it's a little bit more expensive. Just so that I could compare for myself and see if I was missing out on anything with my wish wigs. And I just have to say that you really aren't. Like these two wigs are almost the same color. Yes, the wish wig is just one color versus this kind of beautiful mix color but from far away it's not that different and as far as the structure and fit and all of that goes it's still lace front it fits they don't shed any differently like it's completely comparable the only reason why I would go to a slightly more expensive like wig shop online is if I was looking for a wig that was very specific. So if I was doing cosplay and I was trying to match something exactly, I might go do that because there's a lot more style options, length options, color options, all of that kind of stuff at like a Webster Wigs. There's other wig sites that are comparable to that as well. But so this wig, there was a lot of options. When you're shopping on Wish, it's kind of hit or miss. You can't always find exactly what you're looking for and things kind of come and go. So I just check on Wish all the time and if I see something pop up that I love, like this purple wig, then I will purchase it. But if I was looking for something specific, Wish might not have it, whereas you might be able to find it with a different site. This was like $30, this was like $120. And as far as I'm concerned, they're both pretty comparable to each other, especially because the color is close. The only difference is you get a lot more options shopping with a different site than Wish. It's kind of hit or miss if they're gonna have what you're looking for specifically. So here's my steamer, and I don't usually steam my wigs on my bed, but since I have my lighting and camera set up here, I'm gonna give it a try. I have styrofoam heads, but I'm always a little bit leery of them melting from the steamer, so I don't use them. I don't have one of those kind of like fabric heads with a cloth, so I end up using this thing, which is, I think it's supposed to be like a candle holder or something, but it works, so just use whatever you've got. And I place it on there like this, so this is the straight one. Normally I do this in my bathroom, on the bathroom counter, because as you can see it's really long. So if I'm doing this on the bathroom counter, I just have it right at the edge of the counter and then it hangs down and I can do it that way at the edge of the counter. So let's see if we can do this. And basically I just kind of hold it a little bit away and lightly brush it out. And I never really know with these wigs, I've never had one melt on me, but I tend not to get too, too close. I like to just go a little bit further and work my way closer if it feels like it's working fine or it needs it. But I never wanna melt my wigs and I'm never too sure if that's gonna happen or not. Like I said, it's never happened, but I'm paranoid, so. There's still a little bit of a bump here, so I'm gonna grab that steamer again and work on this side a little bit more. I'm not gonna do all of these wigs today. I'm just gonna do a little bit just to show you guys kind of what the process is. If you want me to make a video that's like full on how I would actually do this, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll keep that in mind for the future. I love this steamer, not just for wigs, but I use it all the time with my costumes because they tend to get kind of just shoved into storage and boxes and stuff so they can get quite wrinkly. And I'm not gonna be taking those things to the dry cleaners or 
making extra laundry because I wore it for like 20 minutes. So typically I will just kind of steam out any issues with my costumes and my backdrops because backdrops can get pretty wrinkly as well. So I live for the steamer. I'm not sure I actually use it for anything in my real life. It's basically just photography things that I use it for. But it's amazing for backdrops, costumes, and wigs. And it's just off of Amazon. I think they're pretty inexpensive. It's not anything specialty or anything. But I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And I haven't used it for this, but it does create a really cool steam look. So I guess you could do some, like, photos with the steam effects. I usually just use my fog machine, but if you don't have a fog machine, I guess you can do that. Okay, so this is just lightly steamed. I'm going to try this on and make sure that I got it how I want it. Okay, looks like I got that weird lump out and it's looking pretty good. I think it's going to be great for styling. Like I can do different things with it, put some braids in it, pin some stuff back. I really like the bottoms. It does have a little bit of a more natural flow because I didn't steam the bottom a whole lot. I just mostly focused on that one kind of weird, strange lump that I had, but I love it. If you have any questions, if there's something that I didn't cover or you want me to go a little bit more in depth on, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll either answer it directly or maybe make a more in depth video about whatever it is. If you're interested in seeing what I end up doing with these wigs, I recommend you follow my Instagram, wild underscore empress. That's where I post all of my photography work and these will eventually pop up there probably pretty soon. I'd look out for the black one first because I'm going to be creating some spooky stuff with that for Halloween probably this week. And I really love this one, so this one will be soon to follow. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of the videos that I'm creating. If you're interested in seeing some more stuff that I've gotten from online shopping, I definitely recommend you check out the video where my mom bought me a whole bunch of surprise things from Wish and from AliExpress. I'll have that video for you on the end screen right now.